Hey guys, uh, welcome to my speech slash presentation about my semester book, um, which in this case it was uh, my book was called The Cold War, A New History, written by John Lewis Gaddis. Um, so I'm going to start with the thesis of the book. Um, I have it written over to the uh, left here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but I'm going to kind of sum it up. Um, Gaddis' uh, thesis, his thesis basically was uh, that the United States and the Soviet Union had such different economic systems that there really um, was no way that they would be able to coexist realistically um, in the world. And so um, the war he's referencing in the quote that I put in his thesis, he's referencing World War II. Um, basically, he starts his book off with World War II because that's essentially where the Cold War starts. Once these two countries win that war, um, they almost immediately become enemies with each other because they each have such different goals after World War II. And they have such different systems running the country that um, they're, there's almost in, inevitably going to be in conflict with each other, which is basically his point. Um, so did he prove, how was his thesis proven? Um, the John Lewis Gaddis basically proves his thesis by with ending his book with the falling of the Soviet Union, which in turn basically ends the Cold War. Um, this proves his thesis basically by saying there was no way that the Cold War was going to end unless one of the countries um, was destroyed. In this case, it was the Soviet Union. And the cartoon I have here, um, basically with, with the fall of the Soviet Union, um, Eastern Europe became left to its own devices and all these countries that were once under the control of the Soviet Union were left to finally create their own governments, most of them making capitalist systems. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, basically, um, the author proves this thesis by ending his book with the fall, um, the collapse, I should say, of the Soviet Union, um, which basically ends the Cold War, and I think he's, his point is the Cold War could not have ended unless one of the countries collapsed, because they were always going to be at war with each other. Okay, so the content of the book, um, like, basically... Um, it's just a very, it's a consolidated analysis of the Cold War, a very well consolidated analysis. It's one of the easiest to understand um, books I've read about a historical event. I mean, we all know how complicated this uh, war was. Um, every any time I've tried to read about it in a textbook, I always get kind of confused because there's so much going on. But when you go through a book that's dedicated to this event and the author methodically goes through each event that was important and doesn't dwell on things too long. It's a very well consolidated analysis, and um, I would highly recommend it for anyone who's interested in this in the Cold War. Uh, I definitely learned a lot from it, and he, st like I said, he starts the book with World War II, and he goes all the way to the fall of the Soviet Union in '91. Uh, obviously, end of World War II being about 1945, uh, and he goes through focuses a lot on the Soviet Union's influence on Eastern Europe and how Europe was kind of split during the Cold War. We have, you know, the Western Western Europe, which was influenced by the U.S., and Eastern Europe, obviously, influenced by the Soviet Union. And the most interesting topic, which we'll get into, about Germany. Uh, but it also covers all of the wars that were started by the Cold War, which includes the Korean War, the Vietnam War, all the conflicts, uh, some conflicts in the Middle East, such as Afghanistan, stuff like that. Um, it also covers, basically, um, ch China was another important country in this conflict. China became communist um, a little while after the Cold War started, um, so that became a problem for the U.S. during the, and so that was also covered in the book as well. Um, but like I said, there's a lot going on, but it's very well covered in this book, and I would highly recommend it. Uh, so questions raised and some questions questions left unanswered. Um, I think the biggest question um, I think I have is uh, there's a lot of what if questions that the author raised throughout the book. I mean, there's a lot of events going on, and he's you know what if questions about what might have happened in these events had um, people behaved differently, like uh, leaders of the country behaving differently, things like the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Berlin Wall. Maybe had it never been built, what would have happened? Stuff like that. Um, but I think the most interesting question is. Um, what if the Soviet Union had not fallen and it still existed today? Would we still be at war with the Soviet Union, which would now be a war that would have gone on for almost 70 years? 
or more than that, I mean, 70 years, 70, almost 80 years, uh, would we still be at war with them? Um, or would there have been some way that we could have coexisted with a communist country and maybe ended our conflicts in uh, southeastern Asia and Vietnam and stuff like that? Uh, Vietnam, obviously, the war in Vietnam obviously ended before the so fall of the Soviet Union, but many questions um, to be left unanswered, um, people wondering what might have happened if the Soviet Union had not fallen in December of 1991 and how that might have changed would we still be at war with them? I think that's the biggest question I have. Uh, so the most interesting part of the book, in my opinion, is Germany. Germany is a very interesting concept um, about the book. It's covered in almost every chapter. Uh, I have a map here of how Germany was split up after World War II. Um, it was all allies had a slice of Germany, basically. So you have a Soviet, British, American, and French block of Germany. And then over in the... Uh, red section here in the Soviet territory, you have Berlin, which is also split up in east and west um, blocks, east being controlled by the Soviets, west being controlled by the Americans for the most part. Um, and it obviously talks a lot about the Berlin Wall, the building and the taking down of the Berlin Wall, how the leaders in each of the eastern and western Germany governments, how they behaved as well, and how they were influenced by the western, by the west and the east, and how the leaders of East Germany were influenced by the Soviet Union and vice versa with the U.S. controlling the uh, Western Germany. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it the also covers how Germany was reunified just before the fall of the Soviet Union. Germany was reunified in 1990, and then the Soviet Union fell the following year. So there was kind of like a domino effect that happened with the Soviet Union where they were kind of losing control of everything, and that led to the fall of the Soviet Union. And Germany was a very important part in that uh, event. So I think this is the, not only the most interesting, but one of the most important parts of the war as well. And this caused a lot of interaction between the U.S. and the Soviet Union and uh, a lot of conflicts. I mean, we've talked about, I think we might have talked in class about um, the airlift that we did over the over to East Germany and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to get too into specific events. But yes, Germany, to me, the most interesting part was Germany. Uh, the most important thing that I think Americans should know about, not this book necessarily, but about the Cold War in general, is um, the effect that it's had um, on our society. Obviously, what the picture I have here is a picture of the uh, Vietnam War Memorial. Um, tens of thousands of Americans died in Vietnam, and the reason that we went to war in Vietnam was because of the Cold War. Had we not been at war at war with uh, the Soviet Union, there would be no reason for us to be in Vietnam. Some argue that there never was any reason for us to be in Vietnam. Um, so it's a very uh, controversial war, and it happened because of the Cold War. It's a very important event in our history, um, and it, the book obviously talks about it a lot as well, and how it influenced public opinion in America. Um, so I think this is a very important event for Americans to learn about, not only the Vietnam War, but the Cold War as a whole, and how it caused the Vietnam War. But I think um, Americans need to be aware of uh, why the Vietnam War happened, and uh, why so many people died. And also, not only the Vietnam War, but the Korean War. Basically, why uh, Americans had to die in these wars because of the Cold War. And there was all basically the overarching reason that these wars happened was because of the Cold War and these proxy wars that happened as a result. So I think these are important historical events that the Amer Amer Americans should learn about. And I'm sure most people know about the Vietnam War, but I think it's important to learn why it happened. Uh, so lastly, we have the uh, critics' reviews of this book. They were generally very positive. Um, from what I've read, John Lewis Gaddis is a very prominent historian on this subject, I mean, the Cold War. Uh, he's very respected in this department. Uh, I have two reviews here, two reviews here uh, quoted. One of them's from Time Magazine, the other one's from the Boston Globe. Um, they both talk about how, I've, I've touched on this earlier, but both of these reviews talk about how easy to understand this book is and how well it consolidates the information about this war. Um, so almost anyone can pick up this book and learn a ton about the Cold War. Um, so anyone, like I said earlier, anyone wanting to learn about the Cold War who finds it really complicated, this is the book for you. 
Uh, it's a very well written book. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, and yes, that is uh, my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed and I highly encourage you guys to read this book. Thank you.